Is close to this. To smoke. Yes. Hey guys, thanks uh, for coming back. Chef Ron here. Um, video camera busted. Uh, we're having lighting problems, but um, we're going to try to go with a little lower tech um, thing today. We're doing ribeye steak uh, for my buddy out in Scotland, Netherlands, somewhere over there in the UK. Uh, Andy Tagger and his beautiful wife. Fiona, I think her name was, but uh, I'm going to get him in trouble. Uh, this is for you, Andy. It's, gonna, it's not going to actually be HQ, but uh, ribeye steak. Right, here's what you need. Um, not a lot going on with this. I've had some insipid culinary hacks complaining that uh, our, our, uh, our recipes are a little too involved. This one's really easy, okay? Uh, we're going to go with some peppercorns. If you're too lazy to crush your own, get some pepper. Uh, some sea salt. We've got a little bit of crushed red pepper, extra virgin olive oil. I infuse mine. If that's over your head, use some uh, regular olive oil. And um, here I got some bacon fat, just you know, because I have some. So this is gonna make it a little more. Awesome. A bottle of wine, which that might be for me. And uh, we got a soda from Burger King. But here's what we're gonna do. Okay, here we've got a, it's a beautiful black Angus ribeye. You see the great color, nice marbling through here. Uh, just a little bit of roll on the bottom. Uh, several things you can do before you cook it. You can cut this piece out or not. I've trimmed mine down a little bit. You see I took some of the silver skin out off the top, which just makes it a little bit chewy. But, uh, you know, I'm letting this be what it is. Um, so I'm going to cut a couple of ribeye steaks that we're going to do off the grill. This will be about an inch thick, which will come up about 20 ounces. And the rest, just trim this down a tad. And we're going to put it in the oven for prime rib. Okay, we're going to make a crust for the prime rib, get it ready for the oven. I got a miniature uh, mallet. I'm going to go with my miniature chef here to beat up some peppercorns. Thanks for calling me, chef. That's all right. This is, uh, who are you? Michael Dodson. Oh, uh, boy. All right, hold on a second. We're going to put our, we're going to put our peppercorns in over a towel, lined with a, um, lined with a little bit of plastic wrap, sort of seal that up and leave some room to expand. One over, two over. Let him have it, Mac. Come on, let him have it. You show him. All right, time out. Let's see. And yeah, we're getting there. They're starting to break up. Let's try it right on the. Uh, but you got to hit it this way, sideways. Okay. Try not to chip our granite. There you go. You feel them breaking in there? All right, looks like looks like we're done. What do you well, think? They done? Yeah. How strong was I? You was very strong. So to our black pepper, of which we've got, where we got here. Let's say one, two, three, four tablespoons. Uh, we'll do the same with sea salt. Uh, a little bit of uh, crushed red pepper, maybe two pinches, and our olive oil. Right, now we're going to do a couple of different things with this. We're going to start without the wine uh, for the roast. Why are you doing it with your finger? Because that's why I have fingers. That's why God gave us fingers. Take a sheet pan. We'll take our roast. We'll mix in a little bit of the bacon fat. Wow. That's why they call it rubbing the meat. Get all our exposed sides. We'll give it a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Prime ribs ready. With what's left, let's add a couple ounces of red wine, and that's going to go uh, as our marinade for the grill. Because for grill steaks, we're going to need to uh, to be not quite so much fat, otherwise it's just going to flame up. And there's plenty of fat in these ribeyes to start. So we'll get those two in the marinade. Voila. Off to the oven. Help him, Daddy. He's doing fine. He's doing great. Alright, our oven. I'm going to go almost 500 degrees. We're going to, uh, we're going to sear that up. We want the outside to get good and crispy, then we'll back it off and let it finish. I'm thinking 
at uh, at 450 for about a half hour. Then we're going go to go down to 400, 375 for another half hour. We'll give her a poke and see what she says. Okay, we're going to uh, brave the elements out here in northeastern New England. Uh, uh, we're gonna put our we're gonna put our ribeyes on the grill, um, and uh, first we gotta do make sure our, our grill gets good and hot. We're up above 500 degrees. Grill's nice and hot, and let's get it going. Try to start them at an angle. There's the one. There's the two, and we'll let them get going. Our heat's still pretty high, but we're also fighting the sub-zero temperatures out here. You okay? So. So while the grill's open, it's it's going to help to keep it to keep the flame down. Things to look out for as we're uh, starting to cook is don't let them scorch too much. If you see you get, you're getting a lot of black stuff around here, that means it's burning on the other side. So be careful of that. Okay, they've been on for about a minute. If you want to get a diamond pattern, flip your tip in the opposite direction. In other words, we went from here to there. This way, when we flip back, we'll go there, and that's going to give us a nice cross check on the front side. After we flip, we'll close it down for a second and let the oven effect work. You hungry? What are we going to do with the rest of this marinade? We're going to just dump it in the garbage. No, we're not going to dump it in the garbage. How about if we cook some vegetables? You want to dump those in there? Good idea. Alright, chuck them in. Good chuck. Got about another minute on this side. Now we're going to flip and get back into that diamond pattern that we were talking about. See the stripes are going this way, so now I need them to go that way. So we'll pick this up and boop. And we'll chuck our zucchini on. Right now we're about rare. If you like it rare, it's a good time to pull them off. Um, you'll notice we got our nice little cross pattern going there. We'll do the same thing coming back this way. Boom. So I don't want these to scorch any more than that. And we'll put them up top to finish. Flip our zucchini. Carefully close it down. When it's 3 o'clock, we'll pull them off. You don't even have a clock on your hand. <laughs> Alright, those are medium rare, medium, just the way we like them in my family. So off they come. Now, uh, you know, the key to this, again, was not too much heat. The external temperature here, the weather was helping us um, because ribeyes do have a lot of inner fat, and that fat is going to cause your flame, be it uh, even charcoal or gas, to flame up on you, and flame will cause it to scorch. And nobody, I'm not going to say nobody likes burnt meat, but very few people like burnt meat. Like me. Like him. Let's eat! Okay, the prime rib now. It's been uh, about an hour and a half. What do you think? We'll pop in a meat thermometer that should go to about 100 degrees. And don't worry, gentlemen. And don't worry, gentlemen, which it does. Now, if your meat thermometer doesn't work or if you don't have one, just try to get maybe a long fork uh, right into the center. It should just touch it to your top lip. It should be hot. Not scorching, not burning, not causing a blister. But that should be hot, which it is. It's about 95, 100 degrees. So we're going to let the beef rest, um, you know, for about 15 minutes, uh, carve it up, and just serve it au jus. Prime rib. Uh, prime rib, coming up. Let's see how we did it. Ooh, this is the best thing I ever ate. Wow. Let me know how I went over out there in uh, Scotland, Ireland, Andy Taggart. Yeah. Um, we'll have better video quality, hopefully, for our next shot. Um, what are we doing next? Uh, we're 
I guess we're going to eat. <laughs> We've got a magic dinner party coming next week. So stay tuned to the Ron and Robin channel. Thanks for tuning in. Get out! We are! It's a little below the belt. <laughs>